Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we will be looking at the awesome little Raspberry Pi Zero. This little device might just be your new best friend when it comes to self-hosting and playing around with Linux. So stick around while we have a look at the benefits and the features that this has and how you can set up your own Raspberry Pi Zero for under 30 New Zealand dollars which is less than 20 American dollars so cheap way of getting into self-hosting and playing around with Linux. Before I get too into the video, I just wanted to thank a subscriber. I don't know if he wants to be named, but he sent me a bunch of Raspberry Pi stuff, displays, Raspberry Pi zeros and everything like that. You know who you are. I don't know, again, I don't know if you want me to name you or not, so I won't. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for making this video possible. Really appreciate it. So first things first, let's talk about the specs. Don't expect huge things from a Pi Zero, as you can see, it's not exactly massive. Now the Raspberry Pi 4s and 3s and 2s, they're right credit card size, right? So this is like half the size of that, it may be even a little bit less. So what this has on it, I'll put the specs up on the screen, it has a 1 gigahertz CPU, has 512 megabytes of memory, it has Bluetooth, it has wireless, so Wi-Fi on it, so you can connect to your wireless in your house, it, you can configure all that up when you're installing the image on it. But really, it gives us a great little device for, again, playing around with Docker containers and stuff like that, and just getting a feel for self-hosting. So what we're going to do is I already have a Pi Zero uh, configured, ready to go. So let me quickly show you that one. And we've already installed Docker on it. So all we'll be doing is just playing around with some Docker images. And I just want to show you this what this little device is capable of and also what it's not capable of. So right here, this is the Raspberry Pi that I will be using. Now this one has a hat on it, which is a display. Um, and it's a inky like hat which is it allows i can configure this display to show anything i want and there's a bunch of these little displays that you can get and add-ons for the board it's really the the world is your oyster when it comes to these little things and what you want to play with and not even just for self-hosting so for learning even like coding the display for this is configured by python so if you're learning python this is a great way to test your knowledge right but again, this one's already configured, ready to go. So we're going to SSH into this and we'll just play around with first just showing you of running some containers. Rightio. So this is going to be our little screen that we're going to play around with everything here. So on the right hand side, we are SSH'd into the Pi Zero. And on the left hand side is just my browser where we're going to showcase anything we deploy. So what we're running on the Raspberry Pi Zero is that we are running raspberry pi os or raspbian i it changed its name and i always get uh, confused on which one it is i'm pretty sure it's raspberry pi os and i'm just going to show you the speeds you can expect on this so let's just do a quick update um on it and i'll just show you how long that takes so let's do a sudo apt update and this normally is like really quick right so again this is kind of the pace that you can expect with this you got to remember the size of it, right? We're, we're, we're talking about the size of a tiny board. So the fact that you can do this sort of stuff is still really cool. So as you can see, it's still taking its time. <laughs> it's reading the package list and whatnot. So again, this is kind of the speed you can expect with this. But once you get things set up, you can kind of just tuck it away and leave it, right? And there we go. So it's all done. So I, again, I just wanted to showcase the speeds and whatnot. So We've got Docker installed. So if I just do a sudo docker info, you can see that I have this all configured. So what I wanna show you is a couple of things you can play around with. So first off, let's look at just if you want to use your Pi Zero for a simple web server. So what we'll do now, let's just try and create a simple web server using Nginx. So let's just do a sudo docker run dash dash name, and we'll call this Nginx and it will run on port uh, 8085 and bind that to 80 on the container and we'll just get the nginx image and we'll just grab the latest one and hit enter so it's going to say it's unable to find that latest image but that's fine it's going to pull it and again, we can see the speeds <laughs> of the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it will get the job done. So I'll be back once this is all finished downloading. <laughs> 
Now, there's something you need to understand when it comes to using Docker on the Raspberry Pi Zero is that it uses the architecture of ARM v6. And a lot of things, actually majority of the images on Docker Hub and the images people are making now will only support version 7, so v7. And what that means is you might hit a lot of roadblocks if you're trying to use images um, very recent images like Jellyfin, Plex Server, Nextcloud, you know, that stuff would already just be quite intensive anyways to run on a little Pi Zero, but you won't even be able to pull an image. So when you are looking for images, you make sure there's a V6 option. And I will show you that now. So on the left here, we've just gone to Docker Hub. So if I just type in Nginx and we look for that and look at the uh, version. Now, if we go to tags, you can see here there's a v6 image okay and that's what we're after we want to make sure there's a v6 otherwise it's not going to work and for example i'll show you right now if we go to something like nextcloud and we look at the image now there's a thing here so nextcloud itself might support your architecture but it might use a database that doesn't and for an example of this is if we just go back and we scroll down to an example um you can see it's using like maria db now if we go and have a look at maria db open that up and we look at the tags for maria db you see there is no v6 there's a v8 now so we're at v8 there is no support for this so you might be able to run the front end but you won't be able to pull the image for a v6 architecture uh so just be wary of that Oh, and also we see Nextcloud is up and running on the right hand side. So let's try to hit that port. So we go pi zero dot local and that was on 8085. And there we are. We have our little Nginx server. Hit refresh a few times and you can see that it's responding to each one of those. You have a very simple web server. And if you're wanting to, again, learn how to host your own blogs or just like a simple website that you want to run, the Pi Zero is fantastic for it. You don't need to go out and buy a, a server for that or even a Raspberry Pi 4 or whatever. That, you know, they can be quite expensive. For $30, you can have a little Pi Zero and you can have it as your own little server. So let's just stop that. I'm not going to go through all these containers because there's really no point, but I just wanted to show you it's very capable of running Docker containers as long as the image supports the architecture of the Pi Zero. Right, and also make sure of the limitations of the, the onboard hardware, right? The CPU and the RAM, there's not a whole lot, but for a simple little website, it's, it's great for. Now, another option is running like something like a Pi Hole. Now I run Pi Hole on my network at home and it's fantastic. So we could try this now um, on our Pi Zero and you could have your Pi Zero as your Pi Hole. So on the left here, we are on the repository for Pi Hole. And if we just scroll down, they have a one-step automated install. So essentially we could just copy this. So we hit that, run this. And it's just gonna check and make sure that our little server is all set up and capable of running Pi Hole. Again, it's not the fastest thing in the world. We have to let it take its time to, to do this stuff. But again, there's so many use cases for this. And if you're wanting to just expand your knowledge on Linux and everything like that, you can just have this thing sitting on your desk tucked away somewhere i'm powering this from another raspberry pi this is being powered by a raspberry pi right now and you can just have this sitting somewhere and just play and break stuff and install things and you know if you break your os just flash a new uh, distro image on the sd card there's so much you can do with these little things if you're trying to just get into playing around or you want to play around uh with screens and you know and all the other things that you can get for these cameras and all of that so many use cases and ways to learn using the pi zero i guess that's what i'm trying to get across that's my point that i'm trying to get across right now all right so now we're at the installer so the installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker okay sure the pi hole is free but powered by your donations make sure you donate if you use pi hole i definitely do because it's fantastic uh it's just saying here now i've covered how to install pi hole before so check out that video i'm just going to pretty much skip through all of this but if you're keen to know how to install pi hole from start to finish go check on that video rightio so our pi hole is all configured and you can see it's saying here's the ip address that we can access it on so we essentially should be able to go to this url Right, paste that in. Look at that. This is running on our Pi Zero. Uh, let's hit login. Enter that password in here. And there we go. We are in our Pi Zero. 
and it's actually quite quick look at that it's yeah that's awesome and yeah we're all set up now running our pie hole on a pi zero remember we're talking about something the size of this okay <laughs> so if you're wanting a cheap solution for running pie hole you have it there as well this little pi zero can do a lot of things it, you can run docker containers just use linux itself and get a feel for it get some add-ons for it and play around with python and creating cool little displays and running a pie hole like you've just seen and it works it does take a little bit of time it's a small little board it doesn't have a lot of resources on it but it can get the job done and it's a very inexpensive way to get your hands dirty uh, with yeah playing around with this sort of stuff so that's what i wanted to cover um thank you so much for the support we're closing in on 3,000 subscribers which is just crazy the support has been awesome lately and i really appreciate it so if you've got any questions or anything like that leave a comment below and i'm more than happy to help you out and i'm sure others are as well so thank you once again and i will see you in the next video have a good one guys bye bye